happy, happy, happy. Got nothing to do? Wanna have some fun? Hey, 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 hey. What's in Dad's basement? Hey, kids. The game I'd like to tell you about today is called Legacy of the Ancients. It was released in 1987, published by Electronic Arts uh, for the Commodore 64, uh, and then eventually as well for the Apple II and the IBM PC and Compatible. Um, this game was developed by a company called Quest Software, which actually was made up of two guys, two twin brothers named John and Charles Doherty. Uh, they released four games total. Uh, this would be their second release. Um, this game uh, probably appealed to me at some point when I saw it in a catalog. It had really killer cover art, which hopefully I'll get a chance to show you at some point, uh, as well as great graphics. Um, unlike a lot of RPGs at the time, this was an RPG with light action elements. Uh, unlike a lot of those games at the time, this one was developed for Commodore 64 as, I suppose you'd say, lead platform. Uh, it took full advantage of the graphics on Commodore 64, which was what piqued my interest in it. Um, I do not have the box for this game anymore. Those EA games at the time came in a uh, kind of a open-up case. Uh, I don't know why I got rid of it. They were pretty slim, didn't take up much room, but I got rid of most of my boxes uh, when I went to college. So uh, I do have the manual for the game. Uh, just a simple uh, monochrome print book affair, not a whole lot to it. Uh, as well as the code wheel uh, that came with the game. This would be from the era of games uh, in the Commodore 64, uh, where games were pack packaged with code wheels that uh, you'd get a prompt for something along the inner ring of the wheel, something along the outer ring of the wheel, and then another prompt for the window uh, to look at once you lined up those two rings of the wheel. Uh, and you'd look inside the wheel and get the code uh, to be able to play the game. Uh, people playing it now, I presume, would just find that information on the internet somehow. But at the time, um, these cold wheels were sort of difficult to copy. You'd have to take them apart, really, to copy. Uh, and they operated as copy protection for the game back in the 1980s. Um, so a couple of notes about this game. Uh, like I mentioned, it's an action RPG. One of the first ones I uh, played and got a hold of. Um, more RPG than action, you'll see it when we get ready to take a look at it. Um, about the creators of this game, you know, I think at some point at the conclusion of the video, I'll be able to show you uh, how I think these two brother game creators uh, created a game that very much inspired two entirely different brother game creators, Robin and Rand Miller, six years later, when they published their uh, mega selling hit missed. So, why don't we take a look at the game? Um, this one actually has a demo mode that I'll take you through first, okay? Hey kids, uh, so I have no idea if I'm doing this right, so I'm just going for it. Here you see the Commodore 64 interface where you'd actually have to type in a basic command to load a game. Some notes about my videos here. Uh, I'm always going to try to get some footage captured from the real source. So this is recorded from an actual videotape I made six or seven years ago recording uh, the demo reel of this game. Uh, and so you might get some artifacts from it. Oh, there's a familiar Electronic Arts UOA loading logo that Commodore Gamers got used to. That was the quick version. Here you can see the credits uh, of the Quest Software guys uh, that I mentioned who uh, haven't produced a game since 1988, I believe. Ah, and here we go with the theme song. The Commodore was really well-renowned for its sound chip, the SID chip. It's really capable of uh, some really interesting sound combinations uh, when in the right hands. Really get some layered sounding orchestration. I'd play this whole thing, but I, I don't want to waste time. You can always listen to the whole thing yourself if you like. Uh, there are people still using the SID chip. You can get a SID station out there uh, to use uh, the demo sceners and uh, chiptune makers use. So here we can see uh, I've dropped into the built-in demo that this game had. 
uh, which you have to flip the disc for. Loading was a very common phenomenon for Commodore 64 gamers. This one, not so bad. Like I mentioned, that Electronic Arts logo you saw earlier, the fast version. All right, here we are in the Galactic Museum. Game presented a, a first-person perspective for the museum and uh, for dungeons, which you'll see later. Look at that. Video screens that lead to further adventures, if you can find coins to feed into them. Listen to that sound sample on the uh, footstep. That's one advantage to having this recorded footage for you. It sounds different in emulation. Small details, but kind of nice to have the original preserved in one way or another, even if there's some tape jitter and some other artifacts uh, from my method of uh, preserving this footage for you. All right, in the game, you, you did have uh, the museum you started out with, and then an overworld you could travel into with uh, ambient sound effects in both. Kind of a neat touch for the time. Random encounters, of course, would occur, but they were usually pretty quick, maybe not that quick, uh, but pretty quick to deal with. Travel on land and on sea. The ambient sound was something that I really did enjoy at the time. It really helped fill out the experience. It wasn't very common. The swamp squishing I particularly enjoyed. So, uh, as I mentioned, this was a Commodore 64 lead platform. Therefore, you had all the great graphics and sound effects uh, that weren't necessarily a part of the other big computer RPG series at the time, Ultima. You're in a town, you're visiting, shopping. Very, you know, wide variety of towns. I like the way the buildings revealed when you came up to their doors. Uh, here I think we'll see some of the action elements to this RPG. Yeah, okay, so here you have mini games where you're shooting at fireballs from the center with a joystick and an action button straight up uh, arcade mini game here in the middle of your RPG. And scoring was about the only way to increase your stats. It, it wasn't a traditional experience point uh, based RPG. Battles could raise your strength, things like this were required to raise dexterity and endurance. It mentions you can gamble to increase your money or rob a bank. You could rob a town. Um, all the guards would come after you. The gambling minigame, it doesn't actually show here. I don't know if I'll have a chance to show that off to you because I don't know if I have a save or, or some way to get access to it. If you did raise trouble in a town, all the guards would attack you. Guards were yellow versions of you. Oh, time to flip the disc. Seven years ago. Um... So the gambling mini game, I don't know if I'll have a chance to show. Uh, the guards would attack you if you robbed the town, and they'd remember you were an enemy until you went to another town and then came back. Okay, here we have the dungeons. Filled with monsters. Again, from the first-person perspective. Really nicely done in terms of graphics for the time, for 1987. Ambient sound again, the drops of uh, moisture creak of an opening chest and the magic sound effects were really nice magic missiles various spells that you would have the monsters would creep up on you and attack you uh, it was turn based movement as I recall not really real time in the first person perspective uh, we're loading something now ah here we are uh, a couple of indoor locations beyond the town and uh, uh the first person of the museum, you had some overhead uh, special locations, including the castle, which you revisited uh, multiple times in the game and, and got further, deeper access to, uh, as you had access to magic spells, etc. And got access to new NPCs. It opened up the quest to essentially 
destroy this evil scroll you had discovered as a simple sheep herder. And here we are at the final culmination, the fortress. They don't give you a whole lot to see, but this is where the end game of the game is played out, um, which I found thrilling at the time. It had this extended uh, escape sequence with an alarm sounding louder and louder as you got nearer and nearer the door, really ratcheting up the tension towards the end of the game. So that's the end of the demo. Uh, next, we'll probably move on to trying to uh, emulate the game a little bit, play through it a little bit, see how far I can get you, see if I can find something worthwhile to show you. Oh, and here's a color test, in case you need that to test out your color. Yeah. Okay, kids, now that I got to show you uh, uh, the direct feed from an actual Commodore 64, saw the whole demo of that, uh, we're going to now mess around uh, in emulator to see uh, uh, if we can't play this game, mess around with it a little bit. I went through a lot of headaches getting Legacy the Ancient running on emulator. I learned my way around the Commodore 64 emulators a little bit. I got a couple of notes for you to help you out uh, if you're looking to play Legacy of the Ancients on any sort of modern emulator. Number one, you got to keep a lookout as to whether your emulator is running in PAL or NTSC mode. Here you can see in Vice I have options under Model and Video Standard to make those selections. You're going to find most of the ROMs you find out there are going to be one or the other. More often than not, PAL, any uh, uh, D64 or emulator disc image um, made of Legacy of the Ancients that I could find uh, was always in PAL mode. So, uh, in addition, you know, you're going to have options for true drive emulation in, in most Commodore emulators because a lot of the games are going to be using copy protection that's going to historically require the drive to be able to be thrown into error mode and then recover and da da da, -da and kind of stuff that you don't get with emulated fast speed uh, all fixed up uh, emulators. Secondly, um, one important thing to remember just about Legacy of the Ancients is going to be the fact that the disc itself here, you see these little notch here right in the uh, in the image of the disc, that notch would be cut out of a disc when it was not when it was made uh, so that you could record on it. It would be removing the write protection. If that notch was covered up, the disc would be write protected. Nothing could be recorded on the disc. Well, games when they came from manufacturers had that notch by default not even cut out like it would be over on this side uh, because of obviously the disc was manufactured with the data on there. Well, Legacy like in the Ancients, while it's loading, if it senses that that notch is cut out of the disc, presumes it's a non-write protected pirated disc and makes a write to the disc to make the program so it'll never boot again. So what I had to do in my OS here was take uh, this disc file and lock it so it couldn't take any changes. It's basically write protected uh, and Legacy of the Ancients isn't going to bork its own uh, 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 disc file in order to protect itself uh, what am I doing here? Uh, uh, I guess I'm going to have to get a directory. Uh, and get a list of that. And we're going to load up this program. So, once again, uh, odds are going to be PAL mode is what you're finding here. Full disk emulation and make sure you can't make right changes the original file or the emulator will make it so the disk image doesn't run again. Alright, so we're booting here, loading, very common experience for, for Commodore owners. And of course here you're seeing a, uh, a pirate screen. If it wasn't for the pirate uh, communities activities out there, a lot of these games wouldn't be runnable at all with the level of copy protection that was placed on their discs. Really obscure, specific te to the technology of the time, copy protection uh, would have kept uh, the program running at all. Alright, as we're loading up here, uh, note, you know, there may be some slow points through this playthrough. This isn't a let's play. I'm not going to go through it, you know, in full detail. Uh, so I may, you may see some cuts. I may jump in and out uh, as I'm just trying to show you most interesting parts of the game.
Okay, here we go. Theme music. game and we need to insert a character disk if we didn't have one creating a blank disk would take care of that for us there we go and let's see let's pick a adventure guy sound good begin and if you're in true disk emulation mode you get to enjoy the true original speed of the disk access honestly legacy of the ancients was not bad at all there were some really bad loading commodore 64 games ah here we go here's a little bit of plot da -da -da -da. Never seen a dead man. Oh, gosh. Well, I've got cats and dogs fighting together here. Okay, so hopefully the cats and dogs are getting along here. <clears throat> uh, basically, you're like a shepherd, and you find a dead guy, and he's got this scroll and some coins, and so you you rifle through his pockets and take it all. But the scroll is an evil curse scroll. Uh, and so you're stuck with an evil curse scroll. Uh, that's the plot. Lo and behold, Galactic Museum. Okay, so the first thing to understand about this game, uh, like I mentioned, it's developed for Commodore 64, I believe, as its lead platform. Uh, you've got full use of the Commodore graphics and sound. Uh, that's part of what uh, drew me to the game. So you've got your ambient sound of the torches. Footsteps as you're walking through the hall there. And, and again, to uh, complete the game being perfectly suited for Commodore, you can play it entirely with a joystick. You just hold down the single joystick button and it takes you to your menu here where you can select your various commands. Like pass, apparently. Or bump into wall. You can see that I have a shotted, studded, shoddy studded hide in my inventory. The gold armband, the evil compendium, and the two jade coins. Let's check out our first exhibit. So the coins, uh, some of them are in dungeons, some of them you get from quests and side quests. Uh, they open up these exhibits and apparently open up other parts of the museum. So you're not going to start out with all the coins that you need straight away. I don't have a Topaz coin, so. The interesting theme of this museum filled with uh, TV screens that end up being doorways to other worlds is part of what leads me to the theory that this game might have been part of the inspiration for the game of Mist, which was published about six years later in 93 uh, and centered on a galactic museum location filled with books that had within these books buzzing video-like computer screens that ended up being doorways to other worlds. Um, both games programmed by brothers. I don't know. Strange coincidence. Uh, the Lost Display Sapphire Coin won't even give me a preview. Something mysterious there. Uh, here's a green one. Jade Coin. I got one of those. We insert that. Okay, great. So I get a knife. Let's go 
check out my inventory. Yay, a fair knife. And let's go set it as my weapon. How about a fair knife? Alright, okay. Oh, something's happening. There's no speeding up the text, but there's not a lot of it. So that's okay. This section, there might be a lot of it. But usually, not so much. There's a little more to tell. I'm supposed to destroy the evil scroll. Blah, blah, blah. I'm in the museum. Da, 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 da. It's blah, blah, blah. I use the obsidian code disk to get into the museum. Well, not this time, but it, when I re-enter, I'll be prompted for a code from this other method of copy protection. I thought this guy said there wasn't much more to tell. And here he keeps talking in my head. Alright, now I'm eligible to move again. And here's another green. I want the jade coin, and this will probably just be a portal to a town. Okay. A little bit on the history of the town. rich and the poor. Okay. Yes, let's go to Thornberry. Oh, good. Gold. So this is your, you know, kind of funnel to be getting to get you started on the game. But overall, I have to say that this game Part of what appealed to it to me was, uh, unlike Ultima or some of those other games, you're not just sort of set loose, figure it out in the world. It's a little bit more directed of experience. All right, let's talk to this guy. Want to buy a raft? I don't have the money. Need some climbing gear? Am I going to go in the mountains yet? No, the mountains are tougher once you get out in the terrain. You can't climb at all without climbing gear. But let's see what else is around. Ooh, fortune teller. Aha. Tips. What do we got over here? Alright, let's try some blackjack. Let's get some money going here. No, no instructions. Bet twenty. Hmm. Oh, we're gonna hit it. Nice. Let's do that again. Ah, I'll keep it. Hmm. Tough one. Oof. Alright, I'll take it. Nice. Um, alright, let's leave. That was Blackjack. Hmm. I believe there were some more interesting games of Blackjack in here. I don't know if we'll find them in this town. Okay, he's the buyback guy. A loan. Oh, let's go for it. 200 bucks. 
Oh, 300 and 120 days. Well, that seems reasonable. Psst, what? I don't know why we had to have that bad music. Ah, oh, food. So when you're traveling out in the wilderness, you need the food. What does he want? One gold per day. Hmm. 40 food. How about 40 food? Oh, uh, a little option here. All right, so I have a delivery. He's going to give me some cash. Armor. Fair ring mail. Mm. Sounds good. Okay, then this looks to be the rich side of town, doesn't it? So you got a little bit of neat graphical touches. That looks like jail. Oh, a bank. Hmm. Let's withdraw. Okay, that's worth a try. Yeah, let's see outer wall of Thornberry. Let's see what else we got around here. It's always worthwhile to poke around the town. This looks like the jail. No oh, weapons. Great knife. Sounds good. Alright, is it it? Is it? I've seen everything there is to see in this town. Why well, be I can go sell my crappy armor and stuff. Sell my crappy knife. No, let's try twenty. No, let's try sixteen. Fine, thirteen. One more time. I got crappy armor to sell, too. Shoddy studded hide. Thirteen. No, let's try... Thirty. Twenty. No, let's try... Twenty-five. I drive a hard bargain. Alright, so... Put on a knife. Put on the ring mail and get ready probably to fight. Oop. I fought not in the direction. Alright, let's go out in the wilderness, take a look around. Maybe I'll survive. Loading. Thornberry's in the swamp where it's squishy. Uh oh. So, random encounters happen all the time in the wilderness. It's pretty straightforward. It's, in fact, I would say button mashy. You hit fight. Quickly, if you want. Until they're dead. Oh, there's another one. Uh, you can get sick from using the wrong animal's flesh for food, but I'm taking it. Let's find another city if we can. Oh. What's that? It looks humanoid. It's a farmer. You don't have to kill farmers. You want to buy 28 days of food for 33 gold? No, that's not a good deal. I bought 80. I should have plenty. Okay, sometimes you get some warning that a creature is coming from now. Earthy, slimy, west, over here. So you can go the other way and avoid it. But a lot of times your random encounters will just get you. Let's avoid that one. Oh. Yeah, let's use its nasty flesh for food. I probably should have grabbed the map that I have of this that I made when I was a kid. 
Okay, so you can't go across the mountains until you buy the climbing gear. Oof. Ouch. Oh. Ah. Die. Oh. Tough one. Oh crap. Alright, so maybe we just run away. Yeah, you can do that too. We'll talk to this guy with the climbing gear here. I should have taken him up on his climbing gear earlier. <clears throat> no raft. He has climbing gear. Alright. Where can I heal? That looks like it might be a bed or something. Flip-flop? Oh, there was another game right in here I didn't even see. Two different tables is why. Uh, okay. Alright, let's look at the instructions. Uh, game of skill and chance. Jump off from the top of the screen. Bounce from bumper to bumper. Falls and bug at the bottom. Green left. Purple right. <laughs> Correctly guessing what it'll go into. Correct colors. This ball is also your phone. Yeah, look at it. Okay. Keyboard is easy. It's no practice. Let's bet. Bet twenty. What do I get? I get one through six. Ah, it looks hard. Oh, you gotta guess in advance, okay? But let's say red. Oh, uh, I'm gonna go with three. There you go. Let's make some money here. That's one. Last one of them changes. Oh, one of them changed. Oh, I'm still good. Looks like four. Last one of them changes. Sweet. I believe this is how I made most of my money in this game. Now that I am remembering. Let's go with one. Oh no, something happened. Okay, on that note, I'll quit. So that might be, that and Blackjack might be the two main money makers in Legacy of the Ancients, as I recall. Flip-flop. It's kind of Plinko-like game. Big Rapids. What a coincidence. All right. This is the town with a river in it, looks like. Yeah, I'm good. Also good. That'll be a fortune teller. What are we looking at here? Aha! Uh -huh, I can buy some uh, spells here. Seek spell is probably the one I'm going to buy. That's the one that gets you back to the museum. No matter where you are on the overworld map. Handy guy to visit. Magic selling guy. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, this just looks like a big bridge. Sure enough. Let me 
to my guy walking. Do -do -do. I got a little head. It's not as noticeable when you're not emulated. Oh, okay, here we go. And he sells healing stuff, too. Oh, there's something I have to do first. Can't remember what it was. Some sort of preparation I needed to be able to buy healing herbs. No, no raft. No, I'm good on climbing gear. Yours was cheaper, though, damn it. Hey, I got some money. I can almost pay back my loan shark. Well, I pretty much looked at what there was to do in these towns. Uh, neither of them had a... These are kind of smaller towns. Neither of them had a, a skill-based game to raise my, you know, dexterity or endurance. That'd be something I'd like to show off to you. Okay, so... Jeez, leave me alone. Uh, so I went and paid off my loan shark and then immediately borrowed 200 more bucks so I could have another 120 days. And I went and got a bunch of food, Grand Ledge, and found Grand Ledge. You need a lot of food when you're traveling. Different terrain take different amounts of food. When you start to run low, it becomes very clear. It's not going to be good. Alright, what do we got in this town? We need to find some interesting town stuff. Okay, I recognize that. That's food. What do we got here? Yeah, that's a buy your used stuff guy. Oh ho! There we are. Armor training. 50 gold was all I had. Alright. So I have to block the fire bolts, and as I do so, I believe my endurance stat will go up. This game does not have experience points like a traditional RPG. Uh, these mini games will raise like endurance and dexterity. You'll find potions and treasures that increase your strength and some of your other stats. Um, you're not allocating stats or and you even if you are gaining levels it uh, it just happens in the background and then the weapons that you find are become better and better and stronger and rated from fair and shoddy up to stupendous and outrageous and blah 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 okay, we're gonna do the real thing here no training costs every time you do it so this is easy peasy gets faster and faster though trust me now your dexterity training is going to involve, instead of blocking these fireballs, it's going to involve shooting arrows out uh, to get the fireballs as well. But they're both real similar. They're both the same arcadey uh, game experience. I don't think you need to see that one separately. Ah, excellent. I've done very good. And here we go. And a lot of bang for our buck here. I think I gotta go until I get hit. Or possibly hit multiple times. Thank <laughs> you. 
Six now. <laughs> that was just crazy. Eighteen points. That's good endurance. So you can see. That's a good benefit from just a, a arcade mini game. I don't know, help me. I'm gonna go ahead and use some magic. Go back to the museum. All right, here we go. Access code. World Erevis. Got it. Stone Emerald. Got it. Ring six. Five one four five eight. Unbelievable, huh? Okay, so back in the museum. We got another exhibit here to check out. Let's use the jade coin. Enchanted flower fountain. Okay. Gotta return the flower to the fountain. Judge for myself. Sweet. Subquest. Give you some more gold. Alright. Well, guys, uh, that's about as much as I can show you of Legacy of the Ancients right now uh, in a reasonable time frame. There's uh, more stuff that we could find. Uh, uh, in particular, dungeons are a hard one for me to show you. There's plenty of dungeons in there. You know, they're first-person perspective like you saw in the demo, much like the uh, museum here, uh, only with monsters and chests. And uh, you use your magic, cast magic at them, run up to them, punch them, hit them. Uh, it was a good variety that they showed in the tour uh, in the... Uh, in the demo and then of course the uh, other parts that you saw in the demo that I'm not gonna be able to reach in just a short little playthrough here but uh, hopefully it gives you uh, an idea of what was exciting about the game certainly caught my imagination at the time one of my favorite Commodore 64 games at the time actually was a uh, Christmas gift that I got uh, from my parents one year uh, just happened to be the same year that I really uh, couldn't resist and 
found my gifts where they were hidden in the house, uh, opened them up before their time, you might say, and uh, <clears throat> had a good amount of fun with my game before it was even properly gifted to me. So don't do that, kids. Do as I say, not as I do, or as I did, which you wouldn't have any problem not doing if I hadn't said it to you, so maybe I've said too much in this particular walkthrough. Thanks for joining us uh, on this, uh, the first episode of uh, Dad's Basement. Uh, I hope you can see that uh, Legacy of the Ancients would be a fun playthrough if you had the patience to go back and play through some of these old games. All right, kids, have a good one. Enjoy. Cool. <laughs>